Yes, no code. Hello, guys. Welcome to another Yes, No Code podcast. Today, we have a special guest once again. Always, I'm trying to bring more people here on the channel so we can talk about no code. And this time, I'm really happy because I have here Greg, which is from Buildcamp. And uh, it's really an honor here um, having you here, Greg, because I'm a huge fan of your work. So welcome to Yes, No Code YouTube channel. Thank you, Kyle. Thanks. I really appreciate you having me on. Awesome. And uh, to get started, uh, guys, we are going to talk like about a lot of subjects here. So it's going to be a very easygoing conversation. Uh, we have a few topics that we have prepared. But before we get started and jump into the content of this call and uh, this conversation, this podcast, we are going to um, I'm going to ask uh, Greg so you can introduce yourself for everyone, but because probably no one, um, not no one, but probably someone doesn't know you yet. <laughs> maybe. <but laughs> maybe. <laughs> I think a lot of people know you, uh, I bet. But maybe for those who don't know you yet, they can know a little bit about you. So yeah, please Great. introduce yourself yeah. to the audience. So be before I do that, it's night time. So I'm just going to have a sip of my beer. Awesome. Yeah, I just have water here, but I will <laughs> follow you as well. So cheers. <laughs> All good. Yeah. So, guys, I'm Gregory John. Uh, I'm the co-founder of BuildCamp. Uh, BuildCamp is a education platform for Learning Bubble that I set up about. It's been about a year and a half now. Uh, nice. My co-founder James works with me on that. We are Bubble exclusive. Um, I've been teaching Bubble since about 2018. Prior to teaching Bubble, I was actually uh, running a venture capital if invested startup. Uh, mm -hmm. on the bubble platform oh, nice. and back in those days no code the term no code wasn't popular so it was difficult for me to explain to the guys at my accelerator program uh, that i was accepted to for my app idea how i was building this no one had heard of bubble webflow a few people people had heard of webflow but they thought it was a toy mm -hmm. so uh, i had a lot of success using bubble to get my mvp out the door raise venture capital and then went on to just help people through that entire process from how do I apply to accelerator programs? How do I create my MVP? How do I raise money? How do I create awesome runway? How do I do sales? All of that stuff. But ultimately, I enjoy creating. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm always drawn towards building. And I build every day. I've had the bubble editor open since since. First signed up for Bubble in 2015, but mm -hmm. since towards the middle of 2016, I've opened the Bubble Editor every day when I've been at my desk. So, um, and I've interacted with tens of thousands of bubblers uh, through my through my uh, community build camp, but al also in person. Um, and I'm also the co-founder of another sort of bolt-on company with the same guys and one other called Frames. I think yeah, Kyo you really do nice. Frames and. Thanks for making us a really awesome uh, marketing video or you know review video. No uh, we were really excited when when we saw people sort of liking the product. Yeah, because <laughs> as you know, a creator, I'm a startup, that's I'm, everything I'm, yeah. you want to see. Exactly, <laughs> I, I, I'm I'm a creator. Uh, have been for a long time, but there's there's always uncertainty in the marketplace. And when you see people enjoying a product that you've made, well, you know that that's that's what more can you ask for? So that's me. Right. Nice, nice. Really nice. Thank you. Uh, so you have been using Bubble for quite a long time, right? So can can we say that you are one of the Bubble pioneers? I, I see you like like that, but do you see yourself like this as well? Most people would agree. Some people <laughs> probably not because there were people before me that I yeah. actually got help from directly. Yeah. Um, yeah. Gabby had been around during those days. I'm not sure. Uh, Gabby, she's gone slightly off the radar these days. Um, Nigel was a guy. Nigel is a guy I look up to. One of the most technical people I know. He was, we have a similar ethos, Nigel and I. Um, and that is, you know, help, pe help people for free where you can, and that will pay, pay it back in dividends. And, you know, I get emails every day of the week saying, Greg, thank you so much for your help, whether it's they signed up to build camp or they just watch stuff mm -hmm. on, on YouTube. Yeah. And that that's what keeps me creating content. It's not necessarily the people that pay for it, but uh, I need to make a living, of course, but yeah. it's the people <laughs> that I, I can actually help to create a life for themselves like I managed to do over the last sort of seven years, which has just been, 
I went from being a non-technical co-founder. Basically, I was working in marketing and brand. Mm -hmm. uh, and then within six months of discovering Bubble, I had my own technical startup and was earning a living that way. And I've always earned a living through Bubble, you know, my nice. entire existence. So, um, so you're a living in proof days, that this is actually yeah, possible. hundred <laughs> percent. And that's what I keep saying to people. People always say, Greg, does Bubble scale? Does Bubble do this? I'm just like, don't worry about that. Like, <laughs> try earn your first dollar being a creator, mm -hmm. right? You've earned your first dollar. You've created value for someone. Take that. That's the step you aim for. You don't, you don't think about can bubble scale. And to be honest, that's a question I had for myself when I first started because I thought <laughs> I had to ask these questions. Yeah. I was online. I was learning Ruby on Rails that can scale. Mm -hmm. uh, did a bit of Python back then. wasn't very good. Bit of JavaScript, and then uh, I went to Bubble and I thought to myself, hmm, can it scale? But I needed to make my first dollar first to validate that my business idea was a good yeah. business idea because at the end of the day, no code is a tool, right? No code itself is not going to make you money. Mm -hmm. Using the tool to somehow extract value uh, from the marketplace is what's going to make you money. So um, I'm going slightly off your initial question, mm -hmm. but um, yeah. No, it's okay. I, you know, from, from, from day one, I found a way to earn a living uh, off Bubble. Was I the first person to do this? Probably one of the first, but not the first. Mm -hmm. uh, but in the education space, I would say, yeah, I was the first person, uh, along with Gabby, creating um, education and helping people really get started on their code journey. Yeah, and you have like one of the most popular courses uh, on Udemy, right? So if you mm. search for bubble courses on Udemy, <laughs> Udemy, you'll find that. Yeah, that yours course. is one of the... <laughs> It's basically it, it. It was it was one of the first ones, um, and that course needs to be updated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's pretty old now, um, and I get a lot of questions, you know, about uh, you know, Greg, um, your window looks different to my window, or uh, <laughs> that workflow. Why did why that <laughs> workflow uh, order doesn't seem quite right for the tools that are at my disposal now uh -huh. yeah. so That's the plan tricky. is to yeah i do want to update the video to be honest i've been waiting for the new responsive engine yeah <laughs> and i've been waiting for basically the new editor because being a creator one of the challenges i face is incremental visual changes to what you're teaching if you're teaching a product people want to they want the same color button that you have Mm -hmm. They want the same layout that you have, the same control. So whenever Bubble pushes an update, yeah. well, then people start saying, why <laughs> does mine look different to yours? And it becomes a challenge. So the Udemy strategy is get the new responsive engine out the door, which it is, mm -hmm. get, get beta out the door so it's more stable, all the features have been implemented, then go back to Udemy and create a new video that's ready for the next three years. Um, and that's also the reason why my basically my recording has slowed down for the last three months in anticipation mm -hmm. of all of this because any work that i've created in the last three months or any work that i've created so far is now redundant <laughs> yeah the new responsive engine so yeah i've got a lot of work yeah, i know the feeling i'm also <laughs> really like even uh the responsive engine now it's released but it's still in beta for me i, I still think that it's a sensitive time to record new classes because like they can change yes. this at any time and probably it's not 100% ready and there, there are a few features still missing that you will have to record something to fix <laughs> the, the classes <laughs> once again. In, and there is like a rumor that they are building a new interface, like a, a totally new interface So for the whole bubble editor. So I think if that happens, then we will have serious problem in terms of having to record everything from scratch. That's it. That's it, man. It's been a turbulent time. Um, <laughs> this year, BuildCamp has focused a lot on doing uh, basically boot camps. Mm -hmm. It's the, the company name is BuildCamp, so we call them camps for fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and the nice thing about camps is uh, it's mostly live sessions. Mm -hmm. And then they get the recordings afterwards. So that was kind of a, a way for me to in anticipation of the new responsive engine, mm -hmm. just create a slightly different business model. Uh, but now that the new responsive engine is out, I'm going to be recording a lot more content. Nice, nice. And that one thing before we jump into some of the questions, because it, it's really funny. I always say like there is no predefined time or duration for the, the session because we it's really nice to, to, to talk about other stuff as well along the way. So 
I don't mind if we postpone a little bit to, to jump into the content. But uh, I, f I feel like a lot of people, they like still nowadays, they feel a little bit skeptical about a bubble or no code. Yeah. I imagine you jumping into this new world like five, six years ago. So how was <laughs> for you? Like, because even now today with all, everything that we have, is it still like a mystical thing for some people? And yeah. imagine like six years back in the date. So how, how was it for you? Yeah, uh, I'll tell you, I'll tell you the story. So um, living in London at the time and I was working in a, um, was a high growth startup transitioning into an SME, is getting a bit bored, is working in a brand. And one of my friends got a job in a startup company, in a tech mm -hmm. company a real tech company when there's 10 guys in a room hacking away. And um, he just said to me, look, you, 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 might, you might enjoy this. It might be a different way of life. Um, maybe you should look into being a developer, doing something different with your life. Mm -hmm. uh, he could see that at the time, you know, I wasn't really enjoying myself. And startups were starting to really gain traction and take off. Mm -hmm. And I was listening to startup podcasts, you know, with my earphones in all day while I was doing my other job. And I was getting excited about the space. Started learning Rails. Uh, Ruby on Rails. At the time, that was sort of the pioneering step, uh, the easy way to get into development. And, mm -hmm. you know, I enjoyed it uh, to a degree. I enjoyed it to a degree. I'm not a huge fan of working in a code editor. I'm more of a visual <laughs> guy myself. Yeah. Most visual people, you know, they come straight to no code. Uh, and that's absolutely fine. Designers, mostly. <laughs> Designers, yeah, Webflow. And, and, you know, I discovered Webflow through a friend who uh, knew I was struggling a little bit with, with Rails, he just said, look, maybe maybe try Webflow. So I had a look at Webflow, absolutely loved it, but it couldn't do what I wanted it to do. Yeah. So I continued my Google search, came across Bubble, opened the you know the uh, domain, loaded the page, and I just thought, no. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> me is, too. I did the same this? thing. <laughs> yeah. Now this is, you did the same thing now. I did this, I did this six years ago. No, I did six um, years ago too. Oh, you did? Yeah, I, oh, I right, because right. I, I, I was always searching for those website builders, but I sometimes right. I just found WordPress them. WordPress was and the I, one at the time. Yeah, yeah, I was using WordPress. I used WordPress right. for, quite, for quite a long time, but I was always searching for those um, website builders. But once I saw Bubble for the first time, I saw the branding and the way the yeah. tool looked like. And I said, no, this, <laughs> no, 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 it's not yet there. But OK, yeah. go ahead. Sorry yeah. <laughs> to interrupt you. <laughs> yeah, so, so Bubble, um, after I got tinkering with Bubble, I realized this could do what I wanted it to do. But back then, it was Josh uh, and Emmanuel, who are now you know friends of mine. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was just them working on the product. So they didn't care about brand. They wanted to build an awesome product. Mm -hmm. So they took a different, they took a different uh, path to Webflow, who wanted to create a shiny thing, get people into play with the shiny thing that wasn't very powerful, where mm -hmm. Emmanuel and Josh chose a different path. And I, I respect them for that. Yeah. But there were problems. Right, Webflow. Uh, well, Webflow can be buggy, but not as often. Bubble was very buggy back then, uh, and I had issues when I was I was um, they had pushed an update, and I was literally standing in a boardroom pitching to venture capitalists, showing them some functionality in my app. When I got the you know that notice with the text in the top left hand corner that just says the site's down, five oh two error or something. I can't remember the error name, and it just uh -huh. went blank. Wow. And I was preaching to them about no code. So it was it was a little bit <laughs> not, hacky. But it was not a bit... <laughs> the ideal time at all. <laughs> yeah, worse. yeah, it was. I, was, I wasn't so much preaching them about no code. I was saying mm -hmm. that I'm using slightly different tools here. Mm -hmm. And they they were asking me if uh, does it scale? You know, the usual story. And I said, <laughs> is this it is absolutely fine for what I need to do. <laughs> you, you say, yeah, it's pretty reliable. I'm going to open yeah. the editor right now and show you in the, the editor crash. <laughs> that's it. That's it. <laughs> They, they made a comment. They made a comment that I didn't look like a tech guy, and that you know, I was, that that pissed me off. And I thought, well, what does a tech person even look like? Um, so they they were basically questioning my technical skills, and I was like, you got you don't worry about it. Anyway, they invested in me in the end, mm -hmm. uh, but nice. they they were investing in me, not so much the tech. You know, if I was I I had made some money, um, I had made my first dollar proof of concept. A lot of the people at the time hadn't made their first dollar having a full blow in Ruby on Rails solution or Python solution. And I yeah. did. So mm -hmm. that's the one of the beautiful things about no code is that you can yeah. iterate and get your design out the door, get your first version of 
of your MVP out the door very, very quickly and iterate quickly. Yeah. But yeah, it's, you know, back then there was no education. Um, back then I, uh, you know, I used to message Gabby and Nigel all the time. Uh, but there, there was really no support. A friend of mine called Jeff, who's another great guy in the community, he's kind of low key, but, but Jeff was also helping me um, in those early days. But it was a real struggle. And I think part of the reason why I came so far with Bubble is because I had to figure things out on my own. I had paying customers. Uh, I, had, I had a team breathing down my, deck, down my neck and I had mm -hmm. VCs who had to do sales reporting too. So I literally did not sleep for a year. I was up all day figuring out, out how to use Bubble. And it wasn't only figuring out Bubble. It was figuring out how to build an end-to-end -end application, uh, a UX perspective that people uh, are comfortable using mm -hmm. and trust and are willing to take the credit card out and pay for. Um, and for me, you know, I always say this, people don't care about your tech. They don't, yeah. they're, they're, not, they're not going to say, oh, Kyo, I, you know, um, that's okay that it doesn't work very well, I'll still pay you. <laughs> people, expect, people expect it to work like mm -hmm. Airbnb works, like Uber works. They don't know what's under the, what's under the hood. Yeah. So that was another huge learning curve for me is I got excited about building something that worked, but then I was getting feedback that why is this UX so bad? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so there were a lot of things I had to learn. I had to learn... Mm -hmm. um, how to structure databases, how to create workflows, or the bubble tools. Yeah. I had to learn about UX, UI, how people interact with it, how people, how to test it, how to get feedback, how to talk to customers, how to do sales. And to this day, I still suck at sales. This is one <laughs> of the things I can't do. Yeah. My sales technique is just be myself, post some stuff on YouTube or Udemy, and hopefully people come. Uh, and that sales technique worked for me. But don't ever ask me to join your startup and try sell your product because I probably won't be able to. I'm so bad at sales. So. I don't know. I don't know why creative people struggle with sales, but that's a really <laughs> common thing to to happen. Like if you are the that's one it. that build things, you cannot sell this. It, yeah, it's yeah, really funny. that's it. And and we all we all need to be you know better at sales. You know, when I say I'm bad at sales, I, I'm talking about if I had like a SaaS product and people didn't know my face. Mm -hmm. My sales technique is I am the face is the brand. Mm -hmm. uh, and if people like that, well, that's 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 the sales. So mm -hmm. I got I got a bit lucky there on the sales perspective. I don't need to do sales behind <laughs> uh, an avatar or behind an email address. I can just talk, upload videos, connect yeah. with people that way. Um, so nice. yeah, I got lucky. But but Bubble's come a long way since 2016. I promise you, it's unbelievable <laughs> how much progress has been made in terms of infrastructure, uh, functionality, stability. The team is now huge. It was mm -hmm. two people back then. Emmanuel was responding to support requests and building the product. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Nice. And uh, one thing that I really appreciate is that you uh, work with design. As I can see, like in your courses, in your videos, in your program. So there is a good touch of design there. So that's that's something that, that I, I really think it's... Uh, it's really worth it. Like it makes sense to think about design things from day zero, and I think you advocate about that as well. So, kind of, I am a designer, yeah. so I I really appreciate that, and I yeah, just wanted to say it and uh, compliment yeah. no, you around you for that. that. <laughs> yeah, because it goes back to uh, my days when I used to work in brand and marketing, mm -hmm. um, and then later on when I was you know trying to build a business, I realized that. People see design first. Mm -hmm. They see design. And when I look at Airbnb, I see beautiful design and that creates confidence. It has to work because it's an application. <laughs> yeah. So of course it has to work. So when people talk about it just needs to work, yes, of course it needs to work. But working, it just it's like a car has to drive. So that's a given. Mm -hmm. So don't even launch until it works. So people aren't going to uh, critique you on whether it works or not because it has mm -hmm. to work. People mm -hmm. will critique you on how it feels to use a product, the brand, all of that stuff, that's where you get the critique, not mm -hmm. does it work. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, because so, it's yeah, sometimes- so, so, that, so brand, brand and design is something that I feel, brand design, the technical aspect, that all has to coexist mm -hmm. these days. Gone yeah. are the days where um, you are embarrassed about the first launch of your product. That, that maybe was the case five, six years ago. The stakes are very high these days. The stakes are very high. So you have to launch with a respectable looking product because mm -hmm. that creates trust.
Yeah, you don't don't I don't think you have to overlook that and make it really perfect, but at least have a bare minimum quality that you are not hundred um, percent not uh, you you will not do less than that. You know, like because and I know it's really sometimes it's really hard for some non technical people when they join no code because like if you use Bubble, it really it asks for you to know a little bit about design because the components are not entirely 100% ready. But I know that you are doing something to help with that as well. So we are going to talk about this in a sure. little bit later. But let's jump into the first question right now. Uh, so I wanted to get a quick overview, your own opinion about how do you see the no-code space for the next year, 2022, we are talking about right now. So what can you say about next year? What are your hopes and expectations? How do you see the the market evolving? Yeah, good question. Uh, what I will say is that it's really starting to gain pace. Mm -hmm. So now is a good time to get into no code. You, you're still early, right? You're still early. Uh, look, Bubble Bubble doubled last year in revenue and in, in, in the amount of users, and they'll do it again. I think even more. I think they're going to need more, more than double. I keep an eye on the numbers on, on the main page of people subscribing. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and as I said, you know, I talk to Josh and Emmanuel um, quite often, or mm -hmm. Emmanuel especially. Nice. Um, so 2022, things are going to move really fast. You know, no code has started to grow up now. Um, many more players will enter the space. Yeah. <laughs> but I think I think the people that are ahead, like Bubble, who they've been doing this since mm -hmm. 2011, they're With one hundred million dollars on their account, <laughs> which will make they are going to a be huge very, difference. very hard to catch. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but 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 no code is going to infiltrate all segments uh, or all pieces uh, of the pie mm -hmm. because it's not just about interfaces; it's about integrations. Like you think mm -hmm. of Zapier, you yeah. think of databases like Airtable. Mm -hmm. We're going to see many many versions of these. The other part of no code that people aren't paying attention to because it's boring <laughs> is the enterprise space. Mm -hmm. um, there's a product called Uncork yeah. that uh, is boring as hell, but they are they are currently valued. I think the last time I looked, two billion dollars, backed by Goldman. Ritu, they are the bubble of internal stacker those uh, well, yeah. business facing applications for internal tools, right? Exactly. Exactly. So I think we are now, we are now moving um, at a pace where I think a lot of businesses will be using no code. Okay, no code for me at the start was just uh, you have your day job and then you go and you try create something useful in the evening side mm -hmm. project. But it's yeah. it's going to grow up next year. I think a lot of we're going to start to see success, uh, more successful no code launches, which we'll talk about later. Mm -hmm. um, but it's really going to grow up. I think there are a few trends that I'm interested in. Um, you know, AI is one of them that I'm interested in, but I just don't think AI works very well. <laughs> I haven't found a, a great use case for it personally. Mm. I think AI can help in the enterprise space more than what I'm interested in. Um, but, you know, I've played with GPT-3 OpenAI, and I think there are some interesting ideas there. Yeah. I know uh, Stephen Campbell, one of the bubblers, he uh, he recently sold uh, an AR based uh, writing writing mm. uh, project. I, I saw like um, this really happening, like a lot of people creating integrations with APIs that can write articles and blog posts. And yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, and I think I think like they're this. okay. Mm -hmm. It's probably not a service I would use because I think mm -hmm. the, the being a creative, the human element is missing. Yeah. Um, just out of interest, the other day I tried something called Tweet Hunter. I hope they aren't watching this, but um, it's basically they, and it's a great physical, it's a great functional product, mm -hmm. but it's an AI product to write tweets for you. Mm -hmm. um, and I was just, I wasn't going to use it. I was intrigued to see how it worked. Mm -hmm. And what it did was you fed it some ideas and then it spat out some tweets uh, that are similar, but that were created by other people. Mm -hmm. uh, or they, you searched um, a term like no code, and then you got the leading tweets about no code over the last few months. Mm. And then you would click a button where it would rephrase some of them. But for me, it just wasn't smart enough. Uh, and to be honest, if you are pulling in tweets that are popular, well, a lot of people would have read those and they kind of know that you are mm. repurposing their material. So anyway, uh -huh. yeah. it's, but stuff like that is interesting. It's, yeah. It is, it is interesting. How far can just, we, we get if once it's really working the way we expect it to work, right? 
I think, you know, computers don't really make mistakes like humans do. And I think <laughs> it has its its place mm -hmm. in society, AI. It will never replace human creative mind. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I, I'm happy to live up to that remark for the rest <laughs> of my lifetime. I don't, I think the human brain is far too creative. I don't think AI will ever take over, but it would give us, you know, interesting perspectives. It's like when you talk to a bot uh, on a website, uh, when you ask a question and a bot answers, you're never going to be satisfied. And you know it's a bot straight away. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, all you need to do is say some silly phrase to it like, what did you have for breakfast? Uh -huh. And then, yeah. Anyway, so AI, AI, I think, is AI is going to grow up quite quickly. One of the drivers behind it growing up quickly is developers. Mm -hmm. Developers see AI as um, the golden egg and will chase the golden egg. Uh, because they could potentially make good money off AI. It gets mm -hmm. investors excited. Yeah. Are you into me, blockchain and NFTs? Yeah. So <laughs> I was going to well. get into that. So, okay. yeah. So, <laughs> Web3 for me is the most exciting space at the moment. Um, I don't think no code and Web3 play very well together at the moment. I've been uh, consuming um, Ethereum based APIs for a few years now. Mm -hmm. There's not a huge amount you can do. You know, you can look at data, you can create little apps that send you alerts for blockchain activity, but you can't do anything that involves uh, private keys for which mm -hmm. you need to use the command line for that. So, so I'm kind of I'm waiting for that. Mm -hmm. um, I have been teaching myself a bit more JavaScript so I can create a little you know side hustles, little blockchain based side hustles with Ethereum. Solana is what has me mostly excited. Mm -hmm. I think Solana is an Ethereum killer, but you know we won't get into that because this is about no code but <laughs> but yeah so you know ai i think is going to be big next year um web3 is going to change the world <laughs> if not next year the year after probably it's not not far away um next and bridge then, camp will be charging nfts so you can join the program <laughs> so if you well, have a, hey you have I, your I nft then you can join <laughs> <laughs> I've, I, look, I've, I've looked at that and that's a novel idea. Maybe I will do it for NFT camp, uh -huh. but um, I don't want to run a boot camp that doesn't create real value where people uh -huh. can actually take what they've learned and potentially yeah. create a business. So I'm still looking at how uh, no code and, and NFTs or no code and crypto can work together. And to be honest, not quite there yet. Yeah. Not quite there. It's a little bit hacky, uh, not very safe talked about private keys which you don't want to be sending through apis mm -hmm. but companies like stripe have now hired mm -hmm. uh, uh crypto mm -hmm. developers mm -hmm. so <laughs> things are getting interesting right things are getting interesting we need and someone stripe... from this uh blockchain world to join bubble revolution and then create some plugins for us so we can use those plugins and they will make a lot of <laughs> money and we can integrate uh, anything that we want and then we yeah. can create the bubble application that generates 10,000 uh, NFTs using Bubble <laughs> to randomize the, the images and generate yeah. random NFTs. <laughs> that's it. That's it. I've been tinkering with those Python scripts uh, lately, having fun. <laughs> but um, yeah, look, I think no code, the best use for no code is still Web 2. Mm -hmm. That's absolutely fine. Not everyone yeah. wants to be in Web 3. Web 2 works really well. I had a meeting with an investor uh, and a friend called Chris recently, and he said, Greg, Web 2 is still great, man. Don't ignore Web 2 um, <laughs> because I was getting very excited about Web 3. And, and I won't. Look, I think SaaS companies, Web 2 based SaaS companies are going to be massive next year. They really, really are. I think one of the biggest uh, opportunities in no code right now is to create a little SaaS product, mm -hmm. little side hustle, because those things can really scale. Yeah. Little no code SaaS products. And I'm starting to see people create those. So that, that's super exciting. We think at Build Camp, we're thinking of running SaaS Camp, where we just teach you the end to end, the end to end process of mm. uh, building a, a product in Bubble, attaching recurring payments, mm. dealing with transactional nice. emails, uh, setting up a bit of automation, and creating value join. for the end user. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Please do. And uh, are you are you thinking about um, doing something related to marketplaces as well? Because I see like a lot of people trying to build their own marketplaces, and yeah. How, how, uh, what do you think about this? Yeah, marketplaces are a great use case. And my first tech business that raised venture capital was a two-sided marketplace. Mm -hmm. We were um, trying to help uh, people on the fashion side 
with freelance work. So models, photographers, makeup mm -hmm. artists, that kind of thing connect with brands. So a brand would put up a job, would have a database of models and would get mm -hmm. them to talk to each other, uh, do the job, sign the job off, get paid. And, yeah. and that was a success. It was a success. Um, but we need to be honest with ourselves about certain things about no code, right? I see a lot of people saying, uh, having fun with uh, saying things like, developers are dead. We don't need developers. <laughs> no, that's um, not I'll tell true. you what, I have the utmost respect for developers because I've been yeah. a developer myself. And who created those no tools. code tools? Who developers. created the tools, man? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> we all did. Exactly. <laughs> we need to respect developers. But I do see a world where developers and no coders work together. I'd say we are more creators. Uh, we develop products, but we're more creators. Developers are the real, you know, meat and bones underneath. Mm -hmm. um, but I see a world where both can coexist, and both will probably need to coexist. Do we need to hire um, a JavaScript developer to build us this little tool that sends notifications mm -hmm. when someone signs up to our app? No, we don't. That can be front end. Yeah. And I recently spoke to a client that said, "Greg." I need to hire five no-code developers. They're, they, they are an energy startup in the US, a mm -hmm. uh, $100 million funded company, recent, similar to bubble size in terms of funding. Mm -hmm. And they came to me and said, I need five bubble, bubble coders straight away, bubble um, creators. Mm -hmm. That was hard to find. Yeah. That was really hard to find <laughs> because, really of just, because of the standard that they expect. A lot of no-coders, a lot of bubble people mm -hmm. um, have come from regular jobs like I did and are still in the developmental stages of trying to figure out how to create a great UX experience. Yeah. So that 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 still has um, and it takes you know, time to learn all the, exactly the it aspects. takes time. Yeah. But back to the original question, I think marketplaces are great. Uh, will I create a camp about it? I'm not. I'm not sure if I'll create a camp. Mm -hmm. I did think about marketplace camp, but I think SaaS camp, software as a service, has a lot of overlap because mm -hmm. ultimately yeah. SaaS mm -hmm. is basically built into a marketplace, right? You have your yeah. payments. They can be recurring as transactional emails, uh, people using the platform. So, um, but marketplaces will always be popular. They'll always be popular because there are, there are always um, uh, a niche collection of people that want to interact. Maybe there are people that want to rent boats from mm -hmm. people that have boats. Yeah, and you, you know can I mean? replicate successful uh, companies repurpose the, the idea into new niches in new countries so you can do like a lot of many things. many more yeah. marketplaces will will be built mm -hmm. you can airbnb exists but hey you can create uh, an airbnb for um for any kind of use case renting i out think one guy built tent, uh, you know? airbnb for music studios with no code perfect yeah. what a great use case and that's <laughs> something you can do with no code but you asked, we're talking about scaling earlier or is it the right use case? You know, no code is not the right use case to build the next Airbnb. Mm -hmm. Maybe to get an MVP out to prove that people need this because that's yeah. what you need to prove ultimately. Regardless of the tech stack, you need to prove that people are willing to pay for your product and you're creating some sort of value in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. No code is not for uh, to build something the size of um, Airbnb. It could never handle that much weight. Yeah. <laughs> Think about pushing pushing an update, and you get the refresh bar, and there are a hundred thousand <laughs> people using it at the same time. Like that's not going to work. <laughs> we need to be honest with ourselves. Yeah. With no code, build a little side hustle that starts to earn your living, and then take it from there. That's what I did. You know, yes. and I haven't I haven't had a regular job since two thousand and sixteen because I started doing that. I found a niche uh, in 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 uh, an industry that I knew very well. I was a photographer. For a long time, my wife was a fashion model. We knew the space so well. We thought, let's use no-code tools to create value, and we raise money from that. And I nice. think anyone, honestly, anyone can do that. A marketplace is a very, very simple uh, um, technical architecture to understand. Implementing it has its challenges, but it's mm -hmm. simple to understand. You have two people that need to interact. There's a money exchange. You intercept a little bit of that money exchange and you've made yourself a living. So lots of opportunities yeah. around marketplaces. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And one thing that I always say is like, if you, the thing that you are trying to build is simple, it will be simple. But if the thing that you are trying to build is not so simple, it's a little bit complex. Mm. It's still with no code, it is still going to be a little bit complex. A marketplace has a bunch of different components to it so it will mm. be a little bit more tricky so yeah i just always say yeah, something around no, that. that's that's fine but do you have to but you can minimize right yeah. yeah yeah 
minimize I, their scope. When I started in no code, I, I built too much because mm -hmm. I could, yeah. because I had the time, because <laughs> exactly. I built uh, I built interactive chat in a day. So mm -hmm. then I said, oh, what's the next thing? What's the next next feature? Guess what? People only use 20% of these features. Yeah. They, did, they didn't want to use all of these features. And this is a trap that, that no coders get caught in. Mm -hmm. No coders build too many products. They don't try to build businesses. They try to build products. And then they talk about it on Twitter. I built 100 products this year. Mm -hmm. yeah. Build a business. <laughs> build a business. You can create side hustles. You can create side hustles. I get caught into this sometimes. Sometimes mm -hmm. I'm using an application and I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to build easy. it myself. And that's a trap. This. Yeah. That's a trap. <laughs> don't do it. Uh -huh. Do it if you want to learn something. Mm -hmm. Don't just build a product because you can. Yeah. Honestly, it feels, and the reason why people do this, and I did this, is because no code is so empowering. Six months, you haven't touched a technical product in your life. Six months later, you have this product, you show your friends, you're like, oh, this is amazing. Look at what I can do. Mm -hmm. But but honestly, um, if, if you're watching this video, take some advice from me who've been through this and, and uh, witnessed this every day of the week. Don't try to build a, too much of a technical product. No code cannot scale to the size of Airbnb. Sorry to disappoint. Um, and just take your time to learn how to be a successful startup founder, not someone that just creates products and then boasts mm -hmm. about it. You know, you have one, one paying subscriber. Mm -hmm. Create one startup that ultimately gets you thousands of paying users. No code is a great use case. But learn. Build side hustles if you like. Just don't get too distracted, right? We need yeah. to be building products uh, that people are going to use, not just products because we can. Yeah. And the one thing that's funny is like before no code, you think the building the product is the main barrier that you have. But then let's say you can do anything you want. So you don't have this barrier anymore. Then you are, yeah. are then you are actually going to see and face the next barrier, which is how can I make money and market sales, uh, sales <laughs> yeah, marketing sales, do everything that is necessary. Yeah. So it's kind of you always think like, oh, building is the problem. Now it's not the problem. So now you are going to face the real problems. <laughs> I tell yeah. you what, sales. Um... I respect people that can sell. Sales comes in many forms. One of my favorite sales techniques mm -hmm. is basically a UX. Make sure the person has a great experience. You have to be solving a problem. Of course, that's the bottom yeah. line. The app has to work. <laughs> that's the bottom line. The car has to move. The engine mm -hmm. has to turn on. But if you create a beautiful driving experience for someone, you're solving some sort of problem, um, that's that's where you unlock the real value. Okay, Not not the actual product you're building. Mm -hmm. It's It's... People want to either save time or money. That's yeah. as simple as those two things, time or money, help people with that problem. <laughs> nice. All right. So 2022, huge expectations for no code or? Yes. I think so. Yeah. I, think, I think the world 2022 mm -hmm. is when uh, the world will start learning about no code. When we start, we're going to start seeing no code replacing Excel spreadsheets. We're going to start seeing Airtable replacing Excel spreadsheets. We're going to see Zapier experts getting jobs at Goldman Sachs, at banks. You know, nice. Maybe it's not Zapier, but maybe it's Uncork or something else. But we're going to start seeing automation in the world. Uh, I think next year is going to be the year. Nice, nice. All right. And um, we talked a little bit about this, but not specifically. Can you... Uh, to talk about any examples or cases uh, of successful no-code companies, even if you created those or your students, mm. what is an examples could you give for those who are still wondering what are people creating with no-code and what can we do? Yeah. They want to so see before had... buying. <laughs> it's, it's really tricky. It's really tricky. Um, they have, yeah, so I've taught... A lot of people that have come through my camps have gone on to accelerated programs. Mm -hmm. um, one of the guys was actually from Sao Paulo, a Brazilian guy that went on to raise money for a, it was a fitness product mm -hmm. uh, where Bubble was a software behind this fitness product that was projected on a screen where you could um, get virtual access to a instructor. Mm -hmm. 
uh, I can't remember the, the name of the product. I think they might have changed it since then. But they, I basically, they came through one of my camps and I helped them coach them through that process, even sort of applying for the accelerator program. Mm, nice. And there's, there, there, there have been many instances of my students going on to accelerator programs and raising money. Um, if you stick around on Twitter, you'll, you know, you'll, you'll be able to see that. I'm not going to talk about too much actual names. Mm -hmm. The reason yeah. being is because if I'm completely honest, there aren't that many. Okay. Now, this isn't this isn't, isn't meant to not inspire confidence. There aren't that many because it's early. Mm -hmm. It's early. Yes. Now, I want to compare no code to Web3. How many companies can you tell me in Web3 that are successful? I'm not talking about people that make the tools. I'm talking about just who is using Web3 companies. Not many people. Mm -hmm. Maybe I use MetaMask, but MetaMask, I'd say, is a tool. More, you know, it's a product, but it's kind of a tool as well. Mm -hmm. um, because I use MetaMask to build little no-code tools because it connects me to the blockchain. So if we compare no-code to Web3, we're actually in a very similar space mm -hmm. in that people are going off and building neat little companies and side hustles that are now earning them a living. So I can't give you a name of this massively successful companies because there are none at this stage. The people that are making the no-code tools are the success stories. Yeah, We're at the very beginning of this journey. So they are the success story. It's the same as Web3. The people creating the tools, they are, they are making the big uh, uh, wins at the moment. But um, the consumer base side is coming. I think next year or the year after, we are going to see yeah. some people earning a lot of money. And the reason being is we spoke about it earlier. You no know, code doesn't scale in a way that we're going to see a brand splashed across the newspapers um, like we do with tech startups at the moment. Because no code is not a good use case for that. So we're not going to see these recognizable brands. I do know that there are um, a few companies in the financial space, which mm -hmm. doesn't require many concurrent users, but maybe they are loaning money or doing something like that, but using no code tools. And those companies, you know, they make millions. I happen to know two companies that are making millions using Bubble. Um, but it's not Bubble that is making them the money. It's their idea and their execution. Bubble is their enabler of the tech product mm -hmm. behind the, the service they're offering. Yeah. So, um, so I wouldn't, you know, when you ask the question about can, can I point to any no-code companies doing well, it's not really about no-code. Uh, it's more about what the business is offering. Um, and as people transition into no-code, they're also transitioning into startup life, the startup hustle, trying to understand how this industry works most of the time are new to it and bring in a cross-domain experience. And it's that domain experience, I think, that will prove whether or not a bubble-related no-code product will be successful or not, not, mm -hmm. not the tool. And also, um, a lot of startups fail, so we have to wait for those first ones to fail and the ones that remain become successful yeah. study yeah. cases. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Look, like, if maybe, maybe I'll answer your question this way. Mm -hmm. Big success story or bubble? Bubble editors built in Bubble. Mm -hmm. People are using <laughs> something built with no code to build no code. Mm, nice. There you go. Eat you know, your they, own they dog food. Part. The, but, the phrase, but, right? <laughs> yeah. But if Bubble, the editor, wasn't built in Bubble, mm -hmm. it would still be successful. So no code isn't the reason. Mm -hmm. They're just eating their own dog food. You know what I mean? They're solving a massive problem in the market. Whether or not they build the underlying tech with Bubble or not doesn't even matter. Uh, and maybe it would be better if it wasn't built in bubble at this stage. <laughs> I don't know, but uh, but but that that's 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 what I think. You know, mm -hmm. um, yeah. So I think people are going to be launching a lot of. If we talk about the traditional route, when I was learning uh, Rails and JavaScript and a bit of Python, that would have taken me a long time to build a product, and I probably would have thought about sales a lot more during that process, and. Maybe I would have built two or three products to be successful. In the no-code space, I think people are building 10 products until they're successful, just because, but it's in the same time phrase. Mm -hmm. So I think that um, building with no-code allows you to fail fast and ultimately probably be successful sooner. Yeah, that's a good one. I can say BuildCamp is a successful case. You use no codes in your website. We, we do. Your community. I'm going to say, I'm, yeah, I'm going to say this again, that... Um, the success behind BuildCamp is not because the dashboard is built with Bubble. Uh -huh. It is because we're providing education. Um, you know, it's as simple as that. But but yes, I mean, I get compliments all the time. We've actually rebuilt it from scratch. Uh, that's mm -hmm. going to be launching oh, um, nice. 
I mean, I've been saying this for a long time, but I've been looking at different educational models for about 10 months. Mm -hmm. And I've been doing boot camps. I've been doing, um, I did an Ethereum based boot camp recently. Um, I've done all boot camps. I've done all different online learning uh, things recently to try to figure out what is the best way to deliver application. Mm -hmm. So, so Build Camp will be changing. We're actually changing our entire business model. Uh, that's coming oh, out soon. All right, soon, so we got a fresh news here <laughs> on the channel. <laughs> well, that's it, yeah. Previous announcement, spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't put me under pressure for delivery dates. <laughs> no, but basically, no, no. <laughs> our first, we're doing Flex Camp. So Flex Camp, literally in the next few days, possibly next week, will be going to market uh, with our new educational model. And basically, we want to help alleviate Bubble's headache of 1.3 million people not knowing how to use the bubble editor. We're not going to get all of those people, but yeah. a small segment of the market will come across um, and we're going to help them under our new educational model. All right, nice. And uh, oh, um, let's talk about frames then because you guys sure. released frames uh, uh, recently and it's really yeah. nice. Uh, plans for the future. Can you actually explain a little bit about frames? We have a video about it here on the channel, but... Yeah, always good yeah, to sure. clarify. Yeah. So frames, frames, um, that came about because I started working with an uh, absolutely brilliant designer. I'm um, very lucky to have him. His name's James Moore. And he came on board at Build Camp to help develop the brand and to also help push the design aspect, mm -hmm. which... I thought I was good at it until I met him. <laughs> <laughs> then, then I thought, look, uh, James comes from a native coding background. So he has, how can I put this? He has the, um, he has the patience and the understanding uh, and the, 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 the framework to design as opposed to no coders who just want to open the editor, throw something on the page and then expect it to look good. Uh, he has several, he has the structured way of understanding how to design, which is now I've used the term structure, and people that know me will always hear me saying page structure, page structure. And James really helped me uh, to develop my page structure skills. Mm -hmm. But after working with him for quite a while um, uh, and trying to basically mimic some of the design work he 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 does, I just wanted a way to be able to get his designs onto my canvas because I was tired of building sign up login boxes every, every time day. from scratch i just want i just want to teach i want to teach uh you know the <laughs> workflows and all that stuff so we thought look there were there there were two other people uh ed was one of them uh that had developed a novel process of creating a chrome extension to basically move uh some bubble code across to um another person's editor so from a database to an editor to mimic the way that Bubble does it, basically. You click on a text element or group, you drop it on the page. Um, so I need to give them credit for doing that. Their product didn't work for us because mm -hmm. their designs, not James's designs. And in my opinion, the value of this product is James, mm -hmm. <laughs> quite simply. So, so I set, set upon trying to find, um, build a team around this product called Frames. Um, to figure out how we can solve responsive design in the bubble because it's the biggest headache and that's yeah. the reason why they brought up flexbox <laughs> i will say though flexbox will create even a bigger headache for most people because it's not easy <laughs> yeah it's i not have a easy, course about okay? that just trying to explain yeah. responsive right <laughs> designing right so you know i know kaio we both know that this is a big opportunity for both of us because it's not easy even mm -hmm. i struggled to begin with mm -hmm. and i came from uh, I also came from a native background where I understand, uh, you know, how design works on the canvas. So, and, and I struggled at first more because it's trying, I had to try and teach myself how to drive the car. I had to start again from, you know, now the steering wheels on the other side of the car <laughs> and my feet have to do different things. <laughs> and when I teach, I don't have to think about the controls because I use it every day. So it's, um, uh, uh, it just comes naturally to me. So I've had to relearn the controls, but I understand the design element really well. What I love about Bubble, Emmanuel came to me, um, we had a meeting about six months ago, and he said to me, what is it about people that they love BuildCamp so much? Um, and I said, because we're solving the page structure problem. How can you create a tool? And I've said, I've said this to Emmanuel from the beginning. You can't create a, tech, a drag and drop tech tool where you just drag randomly on the page. 
it doesn't work like that. And, and, yeah. and, and you know, he, he knows that. Of course he knows that. But he was trying something new and I respect that. Mm -hmm. But I've always said from day one, teach someone page structure. That therefore means that responsive design falls into place. And that's what James has been doing. We've just been teaching page structure. Obviously, we teach a bit of brand and design as well because a lot of I've, I've read comments, hey, we don't need the build camp 960 grid anymore. I've read that. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, Flexbox is not going to solve everyone's problem. It's not going to just solve the design problem. It's going to solve the page structure problem, which is a big tick in the box, <laughs> right? That's yeah. massive mm -hmm. because without page structure, everything falls apart. But it's not, it's not, it's not uh, the silver bullet to solve everyone's design problems. I'm still seeing terrible designs on Flexbox because people yeah. don't understand padding margin, positioning, mm -hmm. color, size, typeface, yeah. positioning. All white that stuff space. still needs to be factored in. <laughs> Lots of white space, man, as much as possible, please. So, um, but, but, but. Don't you have to Xbox, use every pixel since you're paying for the plan? <laughs> <laughs> have to fill up the whole canvas edge yes, to edge. No, $29 no a month. So, why that's wasting it, that's it. <laughs> space on the page? So, the future of frames will, will include flex. Um, James has, has built out all of the new designs. Are you guys um, rebuilding everything? We don't have the to. New, uh. No, we don't have to because basically all we do is we are we without giving away the, the magic sauce, we we we're doing what bubble does. So when you click on a text element or or if you if you click on a on let's say a sign up login uh, group, mm -hmm. if you click on a site and you right click and you say copy, and that group in, includes buttons and all that stuff, mm -hmm. copy and paste. We just doing the same thing as that. So what you're doing is you just copying and pasting in our Chrome extension, taking the backend data and dropping it into your app. So Flex uh, is basically the same thing. We do have to rebuild the designs, of course, because mm -hmm. the designs don't work. But in terms of the infrastructure, not a huge amount of change, just a few bits and pieces. Mm -hmm. So we don't want to release it too soon because of what we talked about earlier yeah. in terms of Bubble pushing updates ad hoc. You know, mm -hmm. Bubble doesn't care about educators like me, uh, <laughs> they they care about their users and the product, and so they should. They shouldn't care about me. I can't complain to them and say, stop pushing little incremental changes because it messes up my videos. They need to progress, and I respect that. I have mm -hmm. to work around that. I have to work with that. So yeah. knowing what I know, um, being quite close to the Bubble team, I'm going to wait a little bit with frames. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm not going to redo work that I, I don't necessarily have to do. So mm -hmm. expect Flex support in the coming months. Yeah, and also the current version still works, right? You don't have to jump into the new responsive engine if you like just because it's new and it's, it's still in beta. So I would yeah. actually wait a couple of months just to see if it goes out of beta and then you jo jump into this new yeah. engine to use it as a production um, version of your website. But for now, maybe just keep it this same way it is. And also, I, for example, for the, there is a row and a, a column uh, option, right? So the row, is, for me, is like Flexbox. I, I think they should have named the things the way they are, like familiar names that we are <laughs> used to, but they didn't. They invented yeah. new names. I don't know why, but okay. Uh, but for rows, we have Flexbox, for, but for columns, we don't have the same options as a vertical flex box so i don't know if they are going to include that so i hopefully yes and i notice also there are some missing conditions uh to actually change the width of elements so right now we yeah. can only tweak the margins so hopefully they it's will no, add no padding either. extra yeah. extra um, conditional so we can access other parts of the component even change the alignment for example for some specific breakpoints and i don't know if they will actually do like breakpoints that you can change the setup and it will remember that you are in that specific breakpoint and then you don't have to set up conditional so i don't know if they will get there like webflow does but yeah let's see how it goes <laughs> i'm i'm still currently a better designer in the old system because i can use breakpoints so mm -hmm. yeah you you touched on something there, but let's you know let's let's give Bubble a bit of time. I mm -hmm. think Flex is the right direction. When I had that chat with Emmanuel a while ago, I said we need to help people create paid structure, and that's what Flex is. So it's a move in the right direction, mm -hmm. more challenging in certain ways, 
helps in 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 other ways um but ultimately i move in the right direction so mm -hmm. i fully support them on that and i will be patient look i've been with them for a long time <laughs> i am as yeah. <laughs> most patient person you'll meet with bubble <laughs> yes i get frustrated but but they've enabled my career um and i think they're an amazing product amazing team so uh so i will be patient and wait for those features to mm -hmm. come out so for frames to uh, 2022 you will wait and then once it's okay then probably we can expect the the components ready with the new responsive engine yeah no no time frame on that yeah okay. um, <laughs> as i said james james has we've done the designs we're expecting you touched on a few things around conditionals mm -hmm. and around max width and breakpoints yeah. so we kind of want to just hang around a little bit and just watch Mm -hmm. People are still signing up to frames every day using it in the old editor. Mm -hmm. I don't know why everyone is rushing to convert designs. I'm converting nothing. <laughs> I'm converting nothing. I'm just moving on and new stuff I created is on the new editor. I'm not converting anything because it works and it looks great. Why convert mm -hmm. it? Yeah. Go back to my previous uh, comment about people don't care about the tech. People care about the experience on the front end. They don't know you're using Flex. Don't change to Flex if you're not confident yet. Use a current responsive engine. Uh, and start getting to know Flex. When, mm. you, when you're confident, move to Flex in your own time. There's no rush. Okay, awesome. Uh, any other plans for Frames or anything you want to comment? Yeah, yeah. So, frame, I mean, Frames has a lot of potential um, to be multiple things. Um, you know, it's a free product, so we've just been developing slowly. I thought, why not enable other people to use James's designs? Mm -hmm. Why not? It's not it's not going to take business from us because ultimately, if you're using frames, it means you're probably not a great designer anyway, mm -hmm. or you might struggle with design. So you're always going to need frames uh, in that case. But on the other side, there's an educational factor to it. I happen to know a few people that pulled frames apart, uh, basically copied a lot of the stuff out of frames, and then started selling that as on the bubble marketplace. Mm -hmm. But I don't care. Um, that's just the the way the world is. Uh, but there is there's an educational fact. Uh, piece behind frames. So I think frames um, has two good use cases. Number one, if you're not a developer, just use frames. That's mm -hmm. our catchphrase. Uh, number two, if you are, uh, if, if, if you are, if you want to learn design, get frames, put the stuff on the canvas and look at how we do it. And then you can, you don't yeah. need to use frames anymore. So mm -hmm. those are the two things. The other thing we're thinking about is um, team interaction, allowing teams to upload their own mm. design in yeah, their own space. Yeah, something really then, nice. Because that's ultimately what, before we put frames in the marketplace, that's what it was. Mm -hmm. James is uploading his designs mm. and I was using them. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Solving <laughs> our own problem first and then you decided exactly, to yeah, yeah. make it a product for other people. Well. Yeah, and then, and then um, the third use case is, well, maybe frames can be a marketplace and other people can create mm -hmm. designs as well. Oh, nice. Um, I would yeah, like to do we this. We could find a way. We could, if, if Bubble's okay with it, you know, Ah, I've spoken yeah. to them about a few things. I want them to be comfortable with that. I don't want to circumnavigate mm -hmm. the, uh, you know, the marketplace uh, factor. But but frames, we can take it. We can take it really far. We can have. Mm -hmm. We can clone full pages with all of the workflows if we want to. It's just are how you far guys, we want to push it. Are you guys thinking about something design system components, something in that area? Yeah, design because, systems for as example, well. You always start with the same uh, <laughs> the same bubbleish interface, the, the design, the, the green buttons, the awkward font. <laughs> the, <laughs> so I, I for, for example, as a designer, I just wanted to Styles, start yeah. yeah, start from scratch with a great style and build on top of that. So like you have the small components, the atoms, and then you have the the components with like everything yeah. together. So yeah, maybe you could set up everything, primary colors, fonts, and everything. Have a yeah. set of font sizes, and these matches, uh, just matching the the components that you have on frames. Could be your own, could be frames, um, pre-built components, and then I think this this could be really interesting, interesting. idea. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> interesting idea. <laughs> okay, it's tricky. I have a theory that. Um, mm -hmm. Bubbles default styles are bad on purpose so that people <laughs> so don't you have use them. To and change so, it. <laughs> so you have to change it. Yeah, nice. People don't go look at the bubble app. So that's that's my theory. 
One problem is sometimes people don't change it. So. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen a bunch of apps have you noticed with that same style. Yeah, they've gotten better. Look, Flex, uh, Bubble have actually lifted stuff from us uh, for Flex, and I'm I'm happy about that. They now use Inter as their font, mm. and that's that's what we used Inter, uh, and just a few 960. They now have a 960 page width where they used to use 1080. Mm -hmm. uh, they've gone down the build camp route at, at 960. So. Maybe we're providing a bit of value for them as well in the education side in terms of what people want. So that's great. Nice, nice, awesome. So I will keep checking frames how it evolves in the yeah, yeah in the future yeah. if you you want to come here on the channel and talk about new uh, updates, feel free to definitely reach out. definitely I'd love to do that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> okay. And uh, well, it's it has been a very nice conversation so far. And to finish off, since we are almost at the end of the year. Uh, let's talk a little bit about Christmas <laughs> around the corner <laughs> here. So if you could ask for uh, wishes or gifts, anything uh, related to Bubble or in the no-code space, anything that comes into your mind, something that you wanted to become a reality, as so for a Christmas I was, gift. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I was saying to um, some people, look, I don't think the new responsive engine will, will come before Christmas, <laughs> but it has. Yeah. So I think everyone is celebrating that as a Christmas present, and I'm, I'm playing with it like a Christmas present. <laughs> Honestly, they could have wrapped it in a box and shipped it here, and I'd, I would have got so excited, and, and I still Now we need another gift, um, uh, Emmanuel. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but, but generally in no-code, um, yeah, I'm. I'm. I've gone down the rabbit hole with Web three, with with blockchain, you know, NFTs, and um, I see so much opportunity in that space for first mover advantage. But I just can't do it because I don't have the native skills to do it. And I just mm -hmm. wish there were more tools. Mm -hmm. Personally, I am heavily invested in Solana. Mm -hmm. I think Solana. Uh, for people that don't know, Solana is a blockchain similar to Ethereum, but much faster and much more. Mm -hmm. uh, but it doesn't have uh, yeah, it doesn't have the image of Ethereum. Um, but it's super exciting. Their underlying um, code is called Rust, whereas Ethereum is called uh, Solidity, and Rust is a very difficult language. So it'll be a while until we see no code interacting with Solana. I think a few guys uh, or forum have released um, some interactive products around being able to interact with um, Phantom which is the Solana version of MetaMask. So yeah, if I could get any Christmas present, it's how can I build no-code tools on Solana or Ethereum? Because I think just the opportunity there is incredible. And I'm not just talking about money, I'm talking about to change the world. You know, mm -hmm. it, It's just incredible how the world is going through this um, decentralized transition, <clears throat> transitioning uh, movement at the moment. And uh, I feel like Web3 and no-code are so separate. Uh, and I kind of wish there was a way just to integrate both of them so that us no-coders also had an opportunity mm -hmm. to experiment in this space, which is going nice. to revolutionize the world in the next 10 years. Nice. And But do you, do you wish that this integration worked with Bubble or doesn't have to be related to Bubble? Well, I wish it worked yeah, <laughs> totally with Bubble, and it, it it would Bubble would be the first step with this because Bubble enables you to build JavaScript-based plugins. Mm -hmm. So it it would always be Bubble. You don't have that extensibility uh, with other no-code platforms. So Bubble, um, you know, Bubble will always be first on board with emerging technologies, things like blockchain, just because it enables that extensibility. Mm -hmm. So um, so I'm hoping Father Chris. Christmas, if you're listening and you're a developer in Bubble, build me, build me some tools to talk to the Ethereum blockchain uh, in, in a safe way um, so I can extract some value from that because I'm, I'm completely besotted with, with the Web3 space. Nice, nice, awesome. That's a good take. Uh, well, I, I would like to try something around this uh, blockchain space as well. But uh, to be honest, I haven't tried before. And just, I, I must say, like, it's not um this is not a investment recommendation guys don't buy solana <laughs> <laughs> but if you are a developer yeah take a look at bubble and maybe uh, see if that's something that you can build and yeah it would be great yeah. i think not only greg would be happy with this but if you go on twitter and tweet about it i think a lot of people would say i would use it i want it so yeah really nice opportunity <laughs> here 
Uh, awesome. Uh, anything that you want to say to the audience, uh, Gregory? Uh, Greg, I don't. I, yeah. <laughs> sorry, I sometimes I don't know if I call both, you Greg both is or fine. Gregory. <laughs> You, for everyone watching, just call me Greg. Um, yeah, okay. uh, Gregory John, Greg John wasn't available on Twitter, so I used Gregory, <laughs> which is actually my full name, but no one calls me that. Okay. But it's kind of my brand at the moment, so I'm just I'm just playing playing mm -hmm. along. Yeah, my advice would be um, if you're just getting into no code, there's no rush. We're still early. There, are, there the the opportunity isn't actually no code itself. The opportunity is uh, you, the person. For using the tools to create your future so no code is presenting a massive opportunity for you take your time look to see if you can create some value in the market um and bubble will basically should be the focal point to help you get there um yeah that would be my advice <laughs> awesome. never too late awesome. to start we're still early awesome great great thanks for the the wisdom that you bring to all of us <laughs> <laughs> and also i would like to thank you in behalf of the no code community myself i've learned a lot of things because of you because of your video so you have done a great service to the no code community and uh, yeah i would like myself to thank you for that contribution and for the content that you are providing and also the courses and everything that you have done for the no code community and for the bubble community as a whole yeah so thank you I'm, so much i really appreciate that kaio and it's amazing that um you know i'm providing value for people all across the world uh and, and and i keep saying to people more people need to get into teaching education not just me you know at some point i'm going to pull the plug on <laughs> udemy and let someone else have a turn i'll probably pull the plug on the youtube but uh not not in the short term because i'm <laughs> going to put, press the accelerator now that the responsive engine is out but mm -hmm. it's never too late to be a creator it's never too late to be an educator you need to try these things in your life. You need to try look for an independent way uh, to be self-sustaining. Uh, and no code for me was that way. And I'm not special. Uh, I wasn't technically minded at all. So uh, if you have the drive, you have the patience, go carve a piece of that world. Go create some value uh, by using Bubble because many of us will be doing so uh, in the coming months and years. Awesome, awesome. Um, amazing conversation. I hope you guys liked this conversation as much as I liked. Uh, yeah, it was an honor having you here on the, the channel. Thank you again. Feel free to come back once you feel that we have oh, something to, to talk about. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so guys, if you are watching the video, if you haven't subscribed yet, now is the time. Subscribe, be part of the channel, learn more about no code. And also hit the thumbs up here on the video if you like the video. Don't forget to share with your friends. Yeah, do the whole thing that you have to do. <laughs> I'm doing my part here. So yeah, leave a comment here down below as well. And you can follow uh, Greg on his social networks as well, buildcamp.com. Uh, what's your Instagram, Twitter, whatever you want to share with yeah, the Yeah, Instagram um, uh, underscore Gregory John on, on Twitter. But um, just use the no-code hashtag and you'll probably hear me rambling on about some nonsense. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> All <laughs> we'll, right. We'll talk on Twitter. <laughs> All right, guys. Don't forget to share, subscribe, and like. And uh, yeah, thank you so much, Gregor, uh, Gregory or Greg. <laughs> and uh, can A we pleasure. finish the video like we both saying together, uh, yes, no code, I'm going to count one, two, three, and then we can say together. Can we try this? Yep. Okay. Sure. One, two, three. Yes, yes, no, no code. code. Bye bye, guys. Take care.